Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion Space Probe 130 ST, which means short tube, uh, reflector telescope on an equatorial mount. Now, we've had this telescope in our lineup for many, many years, uh, but I just wanted to show what it can do. It's probably one of our, our most popular telescopes, just because it's so classic, um, and it's got a nice aperture, shows you a lot of things in the night sky, has the equatorial mount, so it's a real winner for us, and it's, and it's been very popular for many, many years. So let me go through it and show you some of the features. All right, so first of all, it's a 130 millimeter, that's about 5.1 inch diameter reflector tube. So it's got two mirrors, a parabolic one here, a little flat mirror here on an angle to send the light up to the eyepiece. Uh, five inches is a great size for all sorts of things in the night sky. If you're getting your first telescope, uh, a lot of times you end up uh, getting a little small 60 millimeter, 70 millimeter refractor. A, a five inch, uh, 130 millimeter reflector telescope allows you to do so much more in the night sky, so it'll keep you going for many, many more years. It's not something that you start with and then uh, end up growing out of really quickly. Uh, this can last, like I said, for a whole lifetime, really. 130 millimeters allows you to see all sorts of things in the, in the deep sky as well as moon and planets. So Orion Nebula, Andromeda Galaxy, if you get away from the city lights and you get into darker locations, you can see some of the fainter objects as well. All the Messier objects would be visible with a five inch telescope and many of the fainter NGCs as well. I know that the Messiers are part of the NGCs, but they're the brightest ones. Uh, and then you can go deeper uh, with a 5.1 inch telescope. Uh, moon and planets, rings of Saturn, uh, moons around Jupiter, very good resolution. Uh, I wanna talk about the, why it's called the ST, the short tube, uh, short tube telescope. We have another 130 millimeter, the, the longer one, it's just called the Space Probe 130. It's about this much longer, it's a 900 millimeter focal length. This one is 650 millimeter focal length. So what that means is the, the tube is kept a little bit shorter and if you put the same eyepiece in, you get a little bit lower power and a little bit wider field of view. Now, initially you might think, well, why is lower power better? I'd rather have as much power as possible. It's a telescope after all, right? Well, that's not necessarily the case. You can go to high power with this. All you have to do is just add on different eyepieces and you can push this to just as high power as the other 130 millimeter. But out of the box with a short tube like this, a wide field of view is actually very nice, especially if it's your first telescope. Um, there's a lot of black sky around the objects that you want to look at. So sometimes it can be a little bit hard to, to find those objects. With a, a wide field, uh, or sometimes they call them rich field telescope like this, it's easier to sweep them up because you've got that wider field of view to start. Also, with a little bit lower power and the same eyepiece, you get a brighter image than you would with a longer telescope in that same eyepiece. So as the power goes up, your light level drops down. So when you're looking especially at deep sky objects, it's nice to have a nice wide aperture telescope like 130 millimeter with a little bit shorter uh, focal ratio, focal length in order to get a really bright image. So ideal for deep sky images. Uh, and then you can always push it to higher power with the addition of uh, extra eyepieces. Now it comes with two eyepieces to get you started, a, a 25 and a 10 millimeter eyepiece. And the 10 will start getting into planetary range. The 25 is perfect for uh, the brighter deep sky objects. And then if you wanted to really zoom it in, add on a Bartle lens or some higher magnification eyepiece and you're, and you're right there. In addition to the two eyepieces, you also get a finder scope. I, uh, I haven't put it on yet. I'll show that to you in a moment. But you get a 6 by 30 finder scope, the 25, the 10 millimeter eyepiece. And then it all comes on this equatorial mount. And an equatorial mount is really handy when you want to track objects in the sky um, and not have to constantly recenter them um, if you're using like a Dobsonian mount. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just you're going to have to keep up with it. With an equatorial mount, the way you keep up with it is just by spinning this one knob once you've polar lined the telescope. So the equatorial mount gets polar lined by pointing this axis here at Polaris, and then you find the object by unlocking the knobs, moving it wherever you want. Let's say Jupiter is right there. You lock it down, and then you use the slow motion control knobs to center it, and you get really fine control uh, with these knobs. And then as long as you're polar aligned, you just twist this one knob in one direction and it'll follow the object as it moves through that arc in the sky. So a really handy way to uh, keep up with objects, especially at the higher power. Um, at, at 100 plus magnification, uh, you see the Earth rotating underneath you really fast. The planet seems to move across the image in just a few seconds. So just twisting the knob to recenter it is very handy. Plus, since it is an equatorial mount, it's got these gears down here, you can attach a motor drive to this. We have a simple uh, uh, single axis clock drive that bolts onto this big flywheel here and then automates that process. So it knows exactly how fast to spin the gear to keep the object center. So once you center Jupiter, 
You turn on the motor, you let go, and it'll just keep it right in the field of view all night long. The tripod itself uh, can extend. I've got it about midway up right now, but you can get another maybe uh, 12 to 14 inches out of this. So if you want to stand up while viewing, perfectly fine. If you want to lower it down and sit in a, a stool while you view, that's also good. Uh, in the middle of the tripod is the accessory tray. I have the finder scope attached to it, or, or sitting in the tray, so I might as well just attach that up here right now. And the tray down below holds whatever you're not using. So right now I've got the higher power eyepiece in. I can use the tray to uh, store my 25 millimeter, any filters you might be using. Just a nice uh, place to put your flashlight and everything else. All right, well, there you have it. This is the Space Probe 130 ST, one of my favorite uh, reflecting telescopes that Orion carries. A, a perfect, it's like an all around telescope that works great for everything moon, planets, deep sky. It's got the equatorial mount, uh, tracks objects in the night sky very easily. You can attach a motor to it. Um, has nice low power magnification and can be pushed to very high power as well. This is one of my favorite products the Orion 130 millimeter Space Probe ST, reflector telescope. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies. Discover the wonders of the night sky with a classic refractor telescope, the Celestron Astromaster. A great first telescope to enjoy with your family. The compact 70 millimeter model reveals dazzling views of craters on the moon, the rings of Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, the Orion Nebula, and many more of the most popular celestial objects or choose the larger 90 millimeter model for brighter, more detailed images. Plus, you can use either AstroMaster during the day for up-close views of landscape and wildlife. Even if you've never used a telescope before, you'll be navigating the night sky in just minutes with your AstroMaster. The alt azimuth mount with pan handle makes pointing at celestial objects easy and intuitive. Your AstroMaster includes everything you need for a great night of stargazing two eyepieces, a permanently mounted red dot finder scope, and a sturdy, full-size steel tripod with accessory tray. When you're out under the stars, use Celestron's free Sky Portal mobile app for iOS and Android to locate objects in the night sky. As you observe, listen to Sky Portal's audio descriptions for the most popular objects. Happy stargazing!